Chris Paris. Good morning, Max. I'm doing great. Um, I see that we've spent the past 20 minutes ish trying to fix your internet. You've got your hair right, you got the color right. So I, I guess we get a guest of some sort, right? What's happening today? Yes, that is exactly what's going on. This is a red letter day. Um, it's a friend of both of ours, Daryl Kelly. Um, we worked with him back in my Ring Central day and in his Ring Central days, but he's gone on to quite a bit since then. He now is the founder of Hectic, which does productivity tools for freelancers. He has a really cool podcast where he's talking to entrepreneurs and therapists, appropriate enough for CX therapy here. He also <laughs> spends a lot of time on CX strategy, working with companies and help them build out what they should do, both the brands and the vendors. So if anybody should understand a problem with CX and chat a little bit about its implications, it's Daryl. So Daryl Kelly, let's bring you in. Excellent. Thank you so much for inviting you. Hello. Hey, Kelly. Hello, hello. Daryl, sorry. How are you doing? You can call me either. I've been called worse, so that, that works well. It just goes to show, Julian, this is how long it's been since the three of us have gotten together. And I love, look at all these smiles. It feels it feels good to be in your company again, both of you. It has been a while, and you've built tons of stuff since we last spoke. How How are things going in your world? Oh, man. So I was describing this to a friend uh, the other day. Things are so great in the hardest ways possible right now. Um, you know, lots of hard and challenging and complex things that I have found myself in. Um, but I, I've told myself, you know, if I, I would choose something different if I didn't enjoy, you know, complex, hard, difficult things. Um, right. You can find a, a lot of interesting things to solve uh, when you're in when you're in the mud, when you're in the stink, when you're in the stickiness. There's um, only one way and that's out or up, um, you know, and so that's that's where I found myself. It's been great. It's been really great. So being an entrepreneur, I mean, that's not really the first time in your life you've been an entrepreneur. You kind of helped. I don't know if you were founder, co-founder, or just incredibly hardworking in the previous company uh, you were part of. But I, I, I think you had a pretty important role at the time. Were you an entrepreneur before that? Yeah, I was. Uh, and then the previous company that we uh, exited to Ring Central were the you know, where we all came together. Um, I was a chief revenue officer um, there. Um, and before that, and I still actually have it, I have a photography studio here in Colorado. So that's the creative side of me um, that I, you know, most of LinkedIn doesn't see. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a really creative side of me as well over there. All right. And I'm, and I'm, I'm hearing, I'm, sorry. I'm, I would argue there's a lot of creativity on this side as well, but, but okay, good. I understand <laughs> photography is more free to let that go in a different way. So Max, you invited Daryl because not just because he's an entrepreneur, right? He, he has some painful story or good story. What, what he, What's the, he, the idea behind? He promised some pain. Um, and I believe it, it's actually not a, a Stefan Lee would be proud. We may have something of a happy story here. So, um, Daryl, what? Tell it. We've got a couch. Why don't you hop on it and tell us good, tell us bad, whatever it may be. Why don't you? Go you know, ahead if I would have planned this story? better. I would have been sitting over there on the couch, and you know, I would have had my tea. What a missed opportunity! My goodness. Um, uh, I, I, <laughs> well, I've got Phoenix. <laughs> oh well, I need I need Kleenex. I'm going to need Kleenex <laughs> after telling this story. And yes, it is a overall really happy experience and a good experience, but one that was incons immediately inconsistent. And so I will mm -hmm. I'll tell you about this. And so it actually happened. I'd say a little over a month ago. Um, there's this airline that I'm very loyal um, to. I've been flying this airline solely for the last 15 years, um, and um, this airline specifically does not have a direct flight to the location in which I was traveling. And this is how loyal I am. I was willing to do a you know 45 minute hour layover to get back home and. And it was where I was going was only three states away. So yes, going on a different airline that had a direct flight would have made more sense. But once you are loyal to a brand, you're loyal to a company, you know, it's one of those things where you just go, okay, I'll deal with a little bit of these, a little bit of inconvenience. 
uh, as it relates to getting to my destination for the upside of what the loyalty pays off because you know the loyalty is really great you know when we travel um as a family you know we often are upgraded we don't pay for bags you know just some of those things that you know i tell my wife that i'm i'm bearing the burden uh, <laughs> so then we can travel well is what yeah. I, say. <laughs> I i always i always say they got that frequent flyer thing right in my arm here and they just keep pumping it in and they've done a good job these uh, social engineering loyalty in uh frequent flyer especially for business travelers right once you're consistent with someone you know the routes you know the people it just becomes something where it feels familiar and i think a lot of times we minimize that specifically like well why are you loyal to this brand over this brand the familiarity is something that is often discounted you know it's like i, I feel like family when we're i'm talking to ground agents and it's been that same ground agent for the last eight years with the same schedule you know their family we've exchanged stories and it's always in between scanning, which is really funny, um, but that is the type of that is the type of experience that I have consistently had with this brand. And so um, here I am returning home um, from this state that's three states over from where I'm at. I, if I tell you the states, you're going to know the brand. And so that's why I'm avoiding <laughs> state, telling the states because this brand has a very big presence in the location uh, in which uh, in which I ultimately had to stay. Uh, I was grounded in uh, overnight. So I'll tell you the story. So I was in one location. Um, I had just finished up uh, speaking at a sales kickoff and, uh, and um, for a company that I... Um, that I consult for. And it was an awesome event, tons of energy. You know, you kind of leave those moments. I know both of, you know, Julia and Max, you speak at events often, you know, that high that you get as you're leaving, you're like, oh man, that was so great. You know, you're getting the LinkedIn messages and the text messages. And so things are just great. Looking forward to getting home, leaning into the weekend. This is Thursday. Um, you know, I had a light Friday. And so I was just, I was just feeling great. Um, well, this location that I was at has lots of uh, rain and uh, lightning storms. Uh, and so I'm sitting in the lounge and I'm seeing the rain happening. There hasn't been any delay notices yet. But I just told myself in the back of my head, there's going to be a delay. A delay is coming. I know what's coming. I know what's coming. <laughs> And sure enough, I got that message that there was a, uh, I think it was like a 50 minute delay. So not bad. Didn't put threaten my connection back into, uh, back into, Col into Colorado where I live. And so it's like, okay, this is fine. I can deal with 50 minutes. I got my journal out. I got, it was doing some writing. Uh, I actually had my camera with me as well. So I was writing and I was taking pictures of people in the lounge, which I'll have to share with you the photo of the, the creepy pictures that I take, which I'm actually getting this one printed because I really liked the picture. Um, and so I'm in the lounge taking pictures, doing creative Daryl stuff, journaling and things. I'm like, okay, now we're ready to hop on the plane. And so hop on the plane, um, board successfully. It's actually a really efficient boarding process. I was like, okay, things, things, this is good. No problem, no delays. Um, we back, we push away from the gate, we get in line, and then that's when the chaos starts happening. Um, so ultimately I ended up sitting on the runway for an hour and a half, close to two hours, uh, with more and more delay. And I'm like frantically checking, okay, is this going to interrupt my connection? And then at a certain point, I think it was at least an hour in, I go, okay, I'm not making my next flight. Um, uh, because now keep in mind, this was already with a 50 minute delay. Now there's an hour, it's an hour and 50 minutes. There's no way I'm making this connection. So I open up, I open up my app and I start messaging. Um, great messaging experience. I've used it consistently um, since they, they've launched this messaging experience through Apple Business Chat. And I'm talking with this, this agent and I love, I, 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 I screenshotted this just for you because I think it was really funny. It was really funny. Um, so it, we opened it up. They thank me for my loyalty. I respond, thank you. And I'm being pretty curt because I know that I'm going to miss this flight now. And so I'm like, I'm not really trying to be conversational with this person. And then, <laughs> and then they reply, upon checking, I regret to inform you that your current itinerary will result in a misconnect for your flight to Denver. Okay, I clearly Duh. understand that. <laughs> what we could do for you, for you is to look into alternative flights for you. May have a few moments for this. A few moments go by, and they say, we do have a departing flight the next day from this location <clears throat> that, you're, um, that you'll land in to the next location at 7 a.m., um, also available with the same seat, et cetera. Would this work for you? Um, so this was, I'd say maybe five minutes before we were getting ready to take off now at this point. Um, because, you know, like 
the great thing about messaging is it's asynchronous. You know, I'm on the runway, I'm having this conversation. I had to wait in queue for a little bit. You know, there's this priority line, but there's so many people that are being affected that this, even the priority right. line had to wait. And so this is about five minutes before takeoff. And so, you know, I'm putting my bag away now, putting my laptop away. And I did not see that message that we do mm. um, have a departing flight before I was able to take off. So when I was in the air, I responded. I said, hey, you know, that's so unfortunate. I was looking forward to getting home tonight. Is there a partner airline that you could, can I get home tonight? Ultimately, they ended up saying no. I got frustrated. I stopped chatting with them in the air. And I was just like, I clearly am staying over in this place. I know they'll take care of me. You know, I'll have to go to the lounge, go meet with the gate agent, whatever that is to, you know, get the credits, do that, or get the vouchers for the hotel, that whole thing. Um, I land. He had con continued the conversation with me uh, asynchronously. And she said, hey, um, I did book you. I didn't hear confirmation from you, but I assumed that you wanted to leave the next morning because there were no That's other nice. options. So I booked the first flight out for you. Um, the seat that you want, you know, all the same preferences, et cetera. And then she sent me a link and she said, and, and so I've been stuck in cities before. This isn't my first, my first rodeo being stuck in cities. I'm sure everyone on this call has been stuck well, in cities. And it Max can be one is a of the super expert of <laughs> fucked up travel. So yeah. you're in good hands. I, I, it, it's a trauma I've told here many times, different flavors of it. Yes. And you're, it's one of those things where there's so, it, so much of it is out of your control. And you're just like, yeah, right. this is now what I'm dealing with right now. And you're trying to scramble and figure it all out. So, yeah, you get stuck in a city. It's just one of those things. You know the process. You're going to get a voucher for a hotel. Then you're going to have to figure out how to get to that hotel. They're going to tell you there's some shuttle. You're going to get there far too late. And it's just, it's just a hassle. We all know it's a hassle. Yeah. Well, I land. And there, there's a link. And I've never had this link before sent to me. Um, normally, the process is, you know, I'll go into the lounge. They have their um, their team that's in the lounge. It's able to then issue, issue you all the things. They print out this little thing that somehow the hotel is able to accept. I've never understood this process of how the hotel can take what looks like a, uh, <laughs> a, 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 um, a boarding pass and give me a hotel room for it in exchange. But somehow, that all works. Um, Magic so that's usually of QR the codes. <laughs> something happens. I don't know. Yes. Barcodes, QR codes, something happens. Um, and so then they give you the little bag of toiletries, which I always carry on because Ooh. I've had this experience so many times. I always, <laughs> always, always carry on. Um, and so, you know, you refuse that. So um, I was preparing for that as the process, but then I land and I see this link and this airport that I landed at. Um, I wish I could say it because as soon as I would say it, everyone would know it is the worst service, cellular service from any airport that I think oh. exists on the planet. And there's nothing worse than being on the ground and still not being able to have good service. And so I'm waiting for this link to load. So I'm like, what did this person send me? Because they closed the, the, uh, the chat interaction. So I land. Uh, I land, I'm trying to get service, trying to get service. Finally, I get to the gate and I'm able to connect to the Wi-Fi at the airport. I open this link and it is four hotel options that I can choose from. I personally can choose from. Wow. Um, there's a Lyft credit and it, you, like, it was exceptional. You didn't even have to download Lyft. You just followed this credit somehow the magic of databases and how all these things happen together, uh, Lyft credit, and then a meal voucher all on here on, on this little page, this little microsite that was everything that I needed. And so I skipped the lounge and went directly to the hotel with a Lyft directly integrated into oh, this man. web experience. Uh, I'm going to show this, but then, you know, this was the driver, Spencer. You can tell this isn't Lyft here. Uh, or the native lift. Oh, yeah. This is right in this driver experience. Hopefully, I didn't have the uh, the city that I landed in. Um, and then, <laughs> and then, um, it was just it was exceptional. There's a, a QR code for the voucher. This is all one site here. And so I land. It was the most seamless experience for getting fed, for getting to my destination, or for getting to the hotel, and then ultimately checking in to the hotel. Seamless, beautiful. I took screenshots. I sent it to uh, the uh, the CIO, uh, the chief information uh, officer at the brand, um, and I was. I just said, "Hey, this is the experience. This is it. This is the holy grail. This is what I would expect. Think this is why I'm loyal to this brand. You keep innovating. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much." Okay. Well, the next morning comes, and I'm 
same same thing i'm able to request a lift from the app thing it arrives i don't have to worry about my credit card nothing like that going through my account using codes nothing i arrive at the airport and i know that if i stay over or if there's a delay more than an hour and a half i'm going to get a credit but they need that um, previous ticket to close out before i can get that credit um and so of course, I was in the lift. I had some time. I was like, okay, now is a great time to, you know, open up another messaging experience and get my credit. Well, this is where the inconsistencies started a little bit here. And um, I'm now chatting, of course, with a new agent. And um, I have a hyphenated last name, Kelly McDade. And I was forgetting what was on my profile to verify my account. Now, mind you, I just, I've been chatting with them for, you know, I've had lots of experiences with them. I'm sure my number was verified from Apple Business Chat. Um, but she kept asking the same question over and over and over again. Are you sure that's your last name? Because I was, I didn't give her the hyphenated one. I was just going because that's, you know, that's, that's just what's on the profile. It's been there forever. And she kept trying to nudge to it, but she couldn't say it for, I'm sure, compliance, security reasons, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, Oh, my God. And I'm like, I'm fuming in the back of this lift right now, and I can't <laughs> get my, my credit because they can't verify. You know, I'm verifying things on my profile. You know, I'm like, this is clearly me. You know, oh, actually, no, I take that back. It wasn't the hyphenated last name. It was because I wasn't saying junior. That's what it was. That's junior? what it was because I'm a junior. That's what it was. That wasn't the hyphenated last name. It was because of junior. Oh, I forgot all about that. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad. I Thank you for wherever that came from. But yes, it was junior. So it was even smaller <laughs> than the last name. And so here I am like, what just happened here? I had this exceptional experience less than 24 hours before. And then now I'm dealing with this agent that won't just give me a little bit of grace for verifying junior. And that's where I was like, this is weird. This is a completely different experience in less than 24 hours. And that is why I am on CX therapy today. Cause <laughs> that experience, wow. why is this happening? <laughs> There's a lot to unpack here. And that was kind oh, of a roller is. coaster because you started and I was like, yeah, it's good. You didn't share the brand name. And then you continue on the story and I'm thinking, why on earth are you not sharing it? That's amazing. And then we continue and well, you better we don't share. Kind of a emotional roller coaster we went through here with you. I, I think there's yes. some to unpack. Max, you, you, you wanna get started maybe? Sure, sure. Yeah, and I boy, I agree. What a um I so I'm gonna start with how much the good part of that blew me away. Yeah. Um, contrast it with an experience I had where I was on a flight that was delayed enough. I knew I wasn't going to make my connection. So I did the same thing you did. I did chat into the, um, into the airline yep. and got a person and went through everything and they said, Oh, I can't do anything for you. So at least, I mean, you, you were way above and beyond that. You were able to really actively do things on the flight. And I was just like, talk to the hand. We can't let you do that. <laughs> um, but, but when I got on the ground, I called and they could do it like that. So ridiculous thing that you didn't have there. I mean, the yeah. brilliance, uh, talk about living the art of the possible. Yeah. That's kind of what you did there, right? That link and all that stuff that is, um, that's, that is one of the best stories I've heard. Julian, you want to take the bad part of this? Yeah, I just wanted to say for anyone watching, uh, you are re referring to episode 83 of Max Adventures uh, on, the, on the CX couch. Um, That's a pro move there. Yeah. That's a pro move there, like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, so first, actually, I wanted to spend just a minute on the loyalty part, because where you, when you started that story, I was like, this is not loyalty. I mean, loyalty points and mileage is not loyalty. It's a hook to keep people in because that would cost you more to switch. It's not what I would call true loyalty. But then everything that comes after, um, the fact that you know people on the ground, which I don't know how on earth you do that, um, and the fact that you get that amazing service and you're constantly satisfied, this is true loyalty. But you started with a mileage thing. And I'm thinking most people, 
are probably more hooked on the points than the actual great service when it comes to airlines. Mm. And I may be wrong here. I'm regardless of the mileage, I always take the shortest trip or the cheapest one, depending on whether I'm spending or someone else is spending on my behalf. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but there is no loyalty whatsoever uh, on my end. But I also don't have the kind Ooh. of um, the kind of experiences you had. On to to, to Max's point, that is pretty breathtaking. I've never had that experience. I I had the traditional experience that you've described earlier, where you go get your voucher after lining up at three a.m. in the morning for two hours yeah. in front of the counter with tons of angry people taking. <laughs> ages to get their paper because they first want to get all the anger out yes. before they accept to take the voucher. Yeah. This I've been through. Uh, the link, I've not. Uh, most of the airlines I've worked with, they don't have messaging. Uh, they don't understand the value. They ask that you either call, which you can't do while you're in a plane, yeah. or uh, at least when, while you're in the air, or go to the counter, which again, is incredibly painful experience. You're inc very lucky to have that kind of airline that does do the messaging and do it properly. It feels like the inconsistency you're getting is more of a training of some sort. You ended up with one person who, by the way, it's, it's very seldom have this experience where you have a uh, an employee who say, I didn't get your answer, but I assume you're going to do that and get it right and make sure you get everything yeah. you need just yeah, because that's, a... th that's amazing. Usually they would just stop and say, well, Officially, you did not say yes, not going to yeah. take any risk. I'm going to be on the safe side of compliance, which is very much what the Sagan employee did here. <laughs> uh, didn't want to go over and beyond because that was not by the book. And that's more of a, I don't know, training or cultural issue when it comes to recruiting. I, and I training. Like cultural. I think it's deeper than training. I think it is cultural. It, it's, yeah. you know, it's truly a what's the right thing to do. That's what we're going to do. Um, I, yeah, I can't, I mean, it's so easy for that agent to say, here's, here's the list of non con, you know, here, here's all the white space where I didn't get confirmation. So of course I didn't do it, yeah. but God bless her. That's, that's such a, and, such a well, and I think there may there. be this, if I may, as the guest, I think there may be this component here as well, of the difference between captive and outsourced um you know when i was mm. heading towards the airport it was very very early in the morning so there is likely not a north american facility open and this isn't saying there's anything wrong with outsourcing like i i come from the bpo space um there's nothing wrong with outsourcing however there can be, like you you mentioned, different cultural policies, different levels of empowerment. You know, there's just a, there can sometimes just be a little bit of a difference. And that little bit of a difference can lead to more risk aversion or less risk aversion. And right. that's kind of what I felt through that experience is one agent was a lot more, uh, was a lot less risk adverse than the other agent because that agent felt more empowered, you know, probably looked at some history, you know, saw preferences that I like, whatever that may be, the agent had the agency and the support from the culture to make that choice. The other agent may have not had the right training, or there may have just been a completely different culture that may have been in the BPO or the outsourced. I don't know, but that is, that's immediately what yeah. I went to just being in the space. I, I, yeah, I think empowerment is probably more than culture at that point. You could have yeah. the greatest culture in the world, but since you're an external person, you just aren't given the same levers that yeah. the, but the person who works for the company. Ultimately, if you look at the big picture here, um, so you got three experiences. You get the delay, which has nothing to do with the airline. They don't control the weather. So yeah. that's probably fine. You got the first experience with a contact center uh, agent. That was pretty fantastic, especially considering the outcome. And then you got the second experience with another agent that did not go that well. Pretty sure if you look back a year from now, the only thing you're really going to remember is the middle part where you got that link that no other airline seems yeah. to be providing, yeah. where you got that swift service, incredibly good quality, did not take any of your time, which was also a win-win, by the way, because I'm pretty sure the airline saved tons of money by not having 50 people lining up at the counter, trying to yeah. negotiate everything, but having everything automated is probably a huge gain in terms of manpower, um, not even talking about um, uh, 
mental health of those people at the counter trying to deal with angry customers. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think overall, it's a company that does care, try to make things different, try to be unique. And every now and then you end up with something that's not working as well as, as expected. And probably the BPO is a big part of it because I agree. Empowering a BPO is very difficult because you have all contractual issues that you don't yeah. necessarily have in-house. You know, the other thing that's striking about the miss is that it's security. And I, I always have the problem you talked about because Max is my middle name. My first name is John. <laughs> So whenever I'm doing banking, whenever I'm doing healthcare, whenever I'm doing uh, sometimes travel, I, you know, I, up until literally like 10 years ago, and I'm an old ass man, but I'm that stubborn. I was going by with my middle name. Yep. And I remember the bank one time going, saying to me, well, who's John Ball then? And I'm just, oh, okay, I finally eventually learned there are certain circumstances where you don't even, the fact that you have a middle name is ancillary. Um, and it, it, it oh, it's, but to hang you up over a junior, that's yeah. a just. Well, it, it's, it's all about but, but risk, it's, it's, though. It's a one zero yeah. rule. Yeah. It's because there yeah, was no ahead. risk here. I mean, the credit would go to either your account or your credit card. So in any case, yeah. even if the person on the phone was not you, unless you try to change a bank account where the money is going to be directed, <laughs> I mean, the risk is pretty much zero. Plus, yeah. the plane was the day before, so it's pretty much gone already. By now. I, I, I don't get that. <laughs> that I mean, there was no risk whatsoever. That's just yeah. uh, being zealous at this point and yeah. probably helpless yeah. for everyone. Just overly simplistic rule. Yeah, Without but you're right, Julian. I, I think you you are right because I've told that uh, specifically about what I'll remember a year later is that exceptional experience. That you know, it's funny because we use the term frictionless and effortless so much in this CX space, and yet there's not a lot of great tangible examples of what that really, really means as it relates to a customer experience. For me, that was truly this low effort type of experience because I didn't have to put any mental capacity beyond saying, I have a problem. You know, so much of that burden went to that agent, that agent that then was empowered to make, you know, some good decisions on, on my behalf. And then once I, it was that, that concept of that was that was effortless for me and that's the experience that i'm telling people about and even in that that experience was so good that i'm kind of you know the other one was painful it was inconsistent whatever but i'm not telling as many people about that experience i am telling people about the positive experience and i think for the brands that listen to this show it's important to take away the concept of balancing out these exceptional experiences without necessarily needing perfection on every single interaction but making sure the ones that are good are perfect they're amazing they're they are the standard and then you start to find those deviations and then you can start pulling them pulling them in a little bit better but this set a new standard for me and i think that was exceptional I, and you it's know it's going to be hard for any other brand to catch up with that correct yeah, yeah. um there's there's a concept in sociology, I think it's sociology, of the peak end theory. And this is just such a stellar example, and it's interesting. Um, what we remember, and there's this whole study where people shove their hands in ice that we don't have time to go into now, so I'll just leave that at that for the moment. <laughs> um, but what we remember is the biggest change in an experience. And in this case, and that's the peak. And it can be a negative change or it could be a positive change and you had this just you know wow i went from oh, what a hassle this is a nightmare to oh my gosh this is an experience i've never had before i never thought i didn't even think i could have this yeah. so what a peak of a peak that's what you're going to remember the interesting thing is it's called peak end theory because the other thing we remember is the very last thing that happens in the in the experience now, maybe there was stuff that went on beyond. So really the, the bad experience you had wasn't really the end that you worked through that and there was more stuff, but that it, it just speaks to what an incredibly positive your positive was that it overrode 
the thing that happened in the end that was negative. It just what a great story, Daryl. Yeah, it was it was awesome. And I know that you guys, I know everyone has a hard stop here, but I do want to just on that peak end, there was another peak with this same airline last week when I was traveling from a location to another location to get to, to <laughs> home. And I thought it was unfolding as a very similar, a very similar experience. And so I proactively started messaging to try to, you know, like I'm going to end up in this, this place again, I'm not going to make this connection. And there were other people sitting around me that all, some of them were going to Amsterdam and they were like, Oh, we're not going to make the flight. They were talking to the agent. Some of them were trying to call while we were sitting on the ground and they were th- it was a very inefficient experience for them. I landed and I kid you not, this was the most exceptional experience beyond the other one. I landed, there was an agent waiting for me. They said, we held your plane. Let's go. You have 45 seconds to get to the door and (laughs) ran with me to the door. And that was because I was messaging with them versus, you know, calling and doing that whole thing. And it was it happened to be because of that messaging I, experience. It was I would so argue, much well coordinated. Yeah. I would argue that this fantastic experience for you was probably a slightly different experience for other people waiting in the plane for you to join. But, well, we but made... it was still it was still it was still within the window, you know. Okay. So they just yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much. Do you feel better about sharing that that story with us with us, Daryl? I do. I do, and especially with the peak end theory, I think that's one of the pieces where I don't know. I don't know. I I really like that you pulled that out. This was this was great. Actually, Take you just breath. inspired me for another story for another day, Max. So thank you so much for <laughs> sharing that, Daryl. That was nice seeing you again. Hopefully, the next yes. one will be before three years. Uh, and <laughs> well, <laughs> best things for you and all your multiple hats. Uh, with different companies, photography, board advising, podcasts, and all the other crazy stuff you're doing around. Looking forward to chatting again soon. And Max, as usual, has been a pleasure. Hi, bye, bye, friends. Well, it's been See a pleasure. Later. And take care, everybody. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.